Parallel parking, it can be the absolute bane of some people's lives. I see people do all sorts to avoid doing it, whether it's driving around the block 10 times or bumping up on a curb and ruining your tires and your wheels. Anything they can do to avoid doing it, they will. As a result, manufacturers have started putting parking assistance into their cars. Now for me, I used them a few years ago and I wasn't that impressed with them. It, it just seemed to take longer to do everything. And that stress that you're trying to avoid of having cars backing up behind you and getting frustrated that you're taking so long to park, Actually, for me, it was just quicker to parallel park the thing and get out and go. But that's not it for everybody. And I'm sure that manufacturers put these, these additional things into their cars to make things quicker and easier. So am I missing something? That's what I'm here today to find out, to see if I can change my mind on whether parking assistants are actually worthwhile or not. This video is sponsored by Just EVs, a family-run company with the largest selection of battery electric vehicles available with free UK delivery. They now also offer EV rentals. Have a look at justevs.co.uk and don't forget to mention EV Opinion for a free annual service. So how are we gonna do it? Well, I've got myself a nice parallel parking demonstration set up and I've got three cars. I've got the Nissan Leaf, I've got a Tesla Model X and I've got a Mercedes EQC. All have got very, very modern, very sophisticated parking assistant features on them. I'm gonna do a test run first of all, just to get myself a base time, me manually parking in this space here, just to see how long it takes and how awkward it is. I'm then gonna use each of the cars and we'll time them and we'll see how easy they are to set up, how quickly they can get into the space and just a general overview of how they work. And then we'll make a decision at the end, or certainly I'll make a decision whether I think it's worth paying the extra money or going out of your way to get yourself a parking assistant. So let's jump in the first car and get started. Okay, so run number one is just me parking the vehicle with no assistance whatsoever, just to get an idea of roughly how long it takes to do. Stop watch at the ready, on your marks, get set, go. So much like parking with the parking assistant, I've driven alongside the car up to the one in front, can now reverse back into this space and I've purposely made it reasonably tight. Nice thing about this, of course, is I've got a camera here to assist me in parking, which I guess you don't always have. So um, it's gonna be a bit of shuffling backwards and forwards just to get into the spot, but uh, we are nearly there. Here we go and straighten up and stop. 33 seconds exactly, there's our baseline to beat. Okay, so we're in the Nissan Leaf still. I'm gonna now try it with the Auto Park. So I've only used this a few times. I'm not brilliant with the system, but let's give it a go and see how we get on. So um, I've pressed the Auto Park button to bring the screen up. I've told it that I want to parallel park. Uh, let's drive up alongside the space, show it the space and see what it does. So on your marks, get set, go. So we come up alongside the space that we wanna go in. There we are, so I wanna park in there, please. Let's go forward now. Keep going forward and stop. Press start to start park assist. So we press the start button. Okay, now I take my feet off everything and I hold down the park assist button and it does the rest for me. So you can see the steering wheel moving. On the screen, it's telling me that uh, there's a little green box it's going into. It's put the indicator on automatically for me. He's gone in. For me, that's quite a steep angle he's gone in there. I thought he could have got a better run up at that, but still, he's sorting himself out. Forward a little bit, back a bit. It's quite nice being able to see on the cameras the whole time and you know it's, it's seen the vehicles front and back. So hopefully it's not causing it too many problems. He says, he really is thinking about this. Now I've purposely gone here because I don't have a curb here, but I do have a really obvious line with the, uh, the, the green of the grass against the stone. So it should see that as a curb, no problem at all. Whole time I'm holding my finger on this button and there we are, we're done. And that is one minute and 26 seconds. That's a lot slower, isn't it? That's, that's nearly a minute slower than me doing it myself. And I have to say, a lot of the time I was stuck out, so traffic would still be stacked up behind me. Not overly impressive, but um, well, let's give some of these higher value cars a go and see if they're any better. 
Right, next up we've got the Tesla Model X. It, obviously a much more expensive car than the Leaf. It's set up so I should just be able to drive up alongside a parking space and it sees it and I drive in. Now I've tried it where I did the, the Leaf, it didn't see any parking spaces there at all. So what I've done is I've moved the cars over to the other side so that they're against a, a building. So it can see there's a definite building line there and there's plenty of space to park. So let's give it a go. So with this one, we put it into drive and imagine we're driving along in a car park we're just going past spaces and it's constantly looking for them using its sensors and it should see the spaces we drive past we've driven all the way past all the cars all the way past it hasn't seen a thing uh, and i have to say i've done this probably 10 times now I'll move the cars put them in different positions it just will not see the cars in order to do the parking and it's really, really frustrating. The Leaf does it fine, I tried that. So it can be seen that space, it can work. This is a car that's substantially more and it just doesn't see it. And from what I've seen, okay, if you're in a, a parking car park or a parking lot, wherever you are in the world, however you want to say it, uh, and there's clear white lines marked out, it's got more chance of doing it. Now, it doesn't seem to do it all the time, but you do have to have a really clearly marked out just uh, marked out bay in which to go into and that for me isn't the point if it's that big and clear and that well marked out it's easy to park in what we want is these tight little spaces or where it's a little bit more complicated it should be able to do it for us let's see if the mercedes can save face for the luxury car brands so the final car of the day, the Mercedes EQC, and this one, again, when I tried over the other side by the grass, it couldn't see the parking space, it really struggled. So we've come over to this side to give it that building line to be able to see uh, where the parking space is a little clearer. Uh, and it's quite simple, this one. All I do is I put it into drive. Hang on, let's take it out of drive. On your marks, get set, go. So drive, and as I drive along past the spaces, it's looking for the space, as long as I stay under a certain speed. I've got a little P come up in the dashboard, I know it's looking for spaces, looking for spaces. I've driven all the way past the cars now. And as I come up here, hopefully, there we go, a little arrow to indicate that it's seen the parking space. I tell it I want to auto park, touch screen, auto park, take my foot off the, put it into reverse, take my foot off the brake, and now it's away. So it should be, maybe I need to give it a little, there we go. Just needed to get it going a little bit. No, it's lost it. Right, let's go back and try again, shall we? That was probably my fault for not putting it in reverse when I was supposed to. So let's just get ourselves set up again. Okay, so we're in park. Let's restart the watch. Stop, restart. So, are you ready? On your marks, get set, go. So drive forward, keep the speed low, looking for the space looking at the P to see if it's seen a space, pulling up alongside the second car, seen the space, put it in reverse, told it that I want to auto park, press the P to auto park, now I can take my hands off, now we're away. So what I like about this car is, it feels like it's going in quite quickly, but I can cover the brake, and if I start to touch the brake, it doesn't disengage the auto park feature, it just slows it down, which is nice, it's kind of one of those reassuring things, I guess, when you first, get into this car and try and auto park it because it's, it's a lot of money to bump, be bumping into other cars, but it doesn't do that. So there we go, it's gone back, gone forward, going back again a little bit, getting itself in position and stop. 51 seconds. So that is much, much quicker than that Leaf. It obviously it beats the Tesla because the Tesla couldn't even see the space. So uh, I think that's a success, but um, is it really any better than doing it yourself? Oh, well, there you go then, three different cars from three different manufacturers with three different auto park assists on. Did any of them do any good? Well, yes, the Nissan parked itself. It was very, very slow. The Tesla, completely useless, completely missed the space. And there is no excuse for that because the two other cars saw the spaces and managed to park in them. The Mercedes, it did it, I think, the best of the three. And the reason I say that is not only because it was the quickest, but also because it was the simplest to use. I didn't really have to do an awful lot with it. It just, if, as long as I was going nice and slowly, and to be fair, the Tesla does work the same when it's working. Uh, as long as I was going nice and slowly, it saw the space. I just had to 
re reconfirm on that touch screen that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to park in that space and it did the rest for me. So hands down winner for me is the Mercedes, but when you consider the cost of this compared to the Nissan, actually the Nissan is probably better value for money. Would I put or would I buy an auto park assist feature or would I go out of my way to look for one? No, absolutely not. It takes a fraction of the time to parallel park a car when you're doing it yourself. So I think the concerns and the re probably one of the main reasons that people buy these features is because they hate that feeling of being stuck in a road with cars behind them and not being able to park quickly. They, they like to be able to take their time, quite rightly so, so that they don't knock into other cars and they don't cause any damage. But the panic sets in and you just want the car to take over for you and you want it to park for you. But does that mean it's any quicker? Clearly it doesn't. And does that mean that the stress will be any lower? I don't think so. I would rather just get on and get it done. So for me, I wouldn't waste my money on it. But what do you think? Is it a feature that you look for in a car? Have I missed the point of it? Is, it, is there some other reason why you look to buy one of those, uh, a car with that feature on? Let me know, put something in the comments. But um, that's it for today. Hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into auto park features and the, the pros and cons of them and what my views are. Uh, that's it for today. Thanks ever so much for watching. Until next time, you take care.